Matthew chapter 9. I want us to look at this verse what it says the following 37 he said to his disciples I want you to notice he did not say the backyard is extremely cute he said the harvest is plentiful that means it's massive backyards are small fields usually are big God says my field not the world's field the world is on that field but it's my field is massive it's plentiful but the laborers are few therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest I will have three points today. Pastor Ilya already did a wonderful sermon. This is sermon number two. He had three points and the story. I took notes. I was like, this is good. I was like, if he goes for a little bit longer, if we could just finish the service right after that. Point number one. Jesus is the head of the house. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. Jesus is the head of the church. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. In Ephesians chapter 5 verse 23 it talks about Jesus being the head of the church. Jesus is the head of the house of God. So Jesus is the king of the house and Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. Can I say amen? Can somebody say amen? So Jesus is not a vending machine we put in something and we get something out. Jesus is our head. Now if you notice one thing about your head it's the decision making mechanism. So for a Christian to be a Christian you have to understand you can't be a Christian if Jesus is not making decisions for you. Oh, excuse me? Jesus making decisions on my behalf? No, it's what I want to do. That's what somebody says who is not a believer. If you're a believer, my hands, my feet, my lungs and my heart rely on the decision making mechanism of this box. Honestly, they all submit to the head and the head though it's carried by the rest of the body makes decision on behalf of the rest of the body. And so the proper relationship that I have with Christ is the relationship that the body has with the head. I have to submit to Jesus as my command center. Otherwise, I'm only using him as a spare tire. Ah otherwise I'm only using Jesus as an insurance card to escape hell. He doesn't just want to be your savior, he wants to be your head, your Lord. Can somebody say amen? But Jesus Christ has the Holy Spirit who is the Lord of the harvest. The Holy Spirit who lives inside of us has a particular assignment by the Father and by Jesus Christ. God the Father sent the Holy Spirit to draw people to Jesus. He sent the Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus. He sent the Holy Spirit to testify of Jesus. And He sent the Holy Spirit to give us power to become witnesses for Jesus. So watch this. In the house Jesus is Lord. Outside of the house is a harvest field where the Holy Spirit is Lord. And Jesus is telling us that we need to partner with the Lord of the harvest to reach this harvest. The Holy Spirit is like the unnamed servant in the story of Abraham where Abraham had the oldest servant in his house and he sent him to find a wife for Isaac. And this servant who bears no name, he goes on the mission not to find a wife to himself but for his master Isaac. And then he finds this wife and he brings her to Isaac. That's who Holy Spirit is. He's been on assignment and on the mission to help reach the harvest for Christ. Few things I want you to draw down. The Holy Spirit is not given to us for a hangout. He's given to us to reach a harvest. The gift of the Holy Spirit is fellowship but the assignment of the Holy Spirit is the fields. 
Imagine somebody who you're coming and he is overseeing a shop, overseeing a farm. It's a, it's a harvest season. They're on their tractor or they're overseeing hundreds of tractors. And imagine this person is your friend. And you come to them and you say, hey, I would love to fellowship with you. Hey, I want to hang out with you. I haven't seen you in a long time. Can we grab a cup of coffee? Of course, this person, depending on their time, probably would spare you some time. But after that, they would be looking at their clock constantly because there is a harvest to reap. And what they would do is they would say, hey, why don't you hop in with me on the tractor and let's reap the harvest together and then we can definitely hang out and get to know each other. Have you ever had a friend, you were mowing the lawn or something and they decide and they start talking to you? And you're talking for like five minutes and you're like, man, I, you want to help? me like we could really like hang out right now because as guys we connect through work we don't connect through sitting and staring at each other's eyes and holding each other's hands and say tell me about your feelings really you felt that can you unpack that thought for me I really want to know how that felt and what was the feeling that you felt before the feeling that you felt oh okay could you go a little bit deeper oh really that's how he treated you oh really and you still feel about that no as guys that scares us that drives us crazy that that puts us out of our body we, we begin to we get frustrated the best thing we can do is say hey grab a shovel I'll grab rakes let's talk and as we are working together we usually say nothing and when we're done we're like man we had a, such a great time we connected what did you guys talk about nothing but we mow the lawn why because guys connect through shared activities it is abuse to the Holy Spirit if we only fellowship with Him and we have no regard for the fields. It's if we're pulling Him out of the harvest into a hangout with no desire to go into the harvest, we are pulling Him out of His assignment. People came to Jesus who is the Son of God and the King of Kings and they said we want to make you a king and Jesus walked out even though he was a king. Why? Because his assignment on this earth was to die not to reign. If we come to the Holy Spirit and we only want to hang out not the harvest we, he is going to leave us out to dry. To develop deeper relationship with the Holy Spirit we must have a high regard for the harvest the best way to be closest to him is not to pull him to a secret place is to allow him to pull you into his assignment come on somebody I want you to notice what the Bible says ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest field it's interesting it's not saying go and hang out and bring the Lord of the harvest into your situation it says ask him to pull you into his environment the word send out in there and I have a Bible app that you can click on it and it tells you like what that word means. That word send out is exactly the same word for casting out demons. This is what this word means. To cast out, drive out, send out with notion of violence, to drive out, to cast out of the world, to expel a person from a society and to banish. So the Holy Spirit wants to cast us out of the house into the harvest. The same way we cast out demons from people into the pit. Why does He have to cast us out? Because some of us are too comfortable in the house. Some of us are so comfortable in that reclining chair of our doctrinal salvation some of us are so comfortable in the basement of our basic beliefs some of us we love the kitchen table of God's justification and grace man some of us we love the living room of God's redemption of God's love and God's grace and God's like clock is running and the Spirit of God he wants to bring a sense of urgency and say you are good you're a son and you're a daughter but it's time to help me reap the harvest but Holy Spirit I want to hang out with you Holy Spirit I want to fellowship with you and Holy Spirit let's do it together grab some, grab, uh, grab some rakes grab a lawnmower grab a tractor let's do it together let's collaborate and that's exactly how we get connected closer let's work together on the harvest field and that's how we will connect through shared activity amen 
believers get demons out of people but the Holy Spirit gets believers out of the house the Lord of the harvest provides three things for us he provides tools for the job which is the power he provides food which is the joy of reaping the harvest because when we are involved in the harvest there's a sense of joy that comes from seeing people come to know Christ and number three he provides rewards one of those rewards is the wisdom another reward is we will receive the crown of rejoicing as it says in Thessalonians we will receive rewards for being in the harvest in the house we have relationship at the harvest we have rewards what we don't want to be is we don't want to be Christians who lived our whole life in the house and we were kept from evil things but we were not necessarily going to have great rewards in heaven because all we did is stare through the window all we did was simply ate during morning lunch and dinner and then three times in between all we did is we simply lived in the house Jesus saved you so you can live from the house not in the house when you build a house you don't live there 24 7 you live out of there you spend a night there then you go in the morning you go work you you do things your base is the house but you're not there 24 7 and during the quarantine something happened we actually found out it's not healthy to stay in the house for too long number two we are not a house with a backyard we are a house with the harvest as I mentioned backyard is having an outreach programs in the church without having an outlook backyard is treating evangelism as a department in the church instead of a direction of the church a backyard Christianity is the one that sees salvation of people is is only designed for the evangelists and for those people who are out there instead of an assignment that every Christian is supposed to be involved in a backyard Christianity is simply is limited by my vision my capabilities my comfort zone see the reason why I have a backyard that's small is because first of all it came with a lot that was the property line that it come with and secondly I really wanted a small backyard if I would wanted a bigger backyard I would have probably chosen a bigger lot and a lot of times the problem is that our convenience our comfort level and our capabilities they limit our vision they make our vision small not because God is small not because people don't matter to God it's that it's our comfort level it's our capability level it's our complacency level and that backyard is what threatens the harvest because harvest is massive backyards are cute do you not say there are still four months and then the harvest comes behold I say to you lift up your eyes and look at the not a field fields that speaks of cities that speaks of regions for they are ready white for harvest harvest is always bigger than the house father's fields does not end where my comfort ends my father's field does not end where my capabilities end. Well, I don't speak English. Well, I'm an immigrant in this country. It doesn't matter. Well, but I, I don't know how to connect to an older congregation. I don't have the education that they have. A lot of them are atheists. There's, there's a lot of them are awoke. I don't know how to connect with them. My capabilities do not decide my father's property line. My father's field doesn't end where my vision ends. Let me give you the property line of our father's field. Whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Whoever is the property line. He desires that all men to be saved. In 1 Timothy 2.4, that's the property line. He's not willing that any should perish and desire that all will come to repentance. 2 Peter 3.9, that is the property line. I remember when we started to kind of dream and believe for the, for the new building and you know and I, and I believe God's going to give us Toyota Center one day. And I went and I started looking at the photos of Toyota Center. If you can um, show us the photos on the, of the Toyota Center. And it looks beautiful, looks massive. You know, and then I looked at the Tri-Cities map and I realized there is no way on this God's green earth Tri-Cities can fit into Toyota Center. And I felt this tug inside of me where God said, 
I did not draw the property line around Toyota. The property line where my harvest ends is all men to come to know salvation and none should perish. My harvest field is not what can fit into the biggest facility in your town. My harvest field is not what can put you in front of the outreach magazine as the fastest and the largest church in the United States. My harvest field is not catering to your ego and it's not catering to your little peanut sized dreams. My harvest field is whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ. My harvest field, if there is a human being that has a heartbeat, I love them and I care for them. Church, I want to let you know that God has a borderline and that borderline goes all around Tri-Cities. All around the Burbank, all around the West Pasco, all around the East Pasco, all around Richland, all around Kenwick. And then if you lift your eyes a little bit higher and you realize the media can reach more people, God's borderline begins to extend. If there will be they, if they will put people on Mars, God's borderline will extend to Mars. Harvest is always bigger than the house. If you look at these farmhouses, you will see the houses are tiny. Even the biggest and the richest and the baddest farmers. Their fields are bigger than their mansions. My friend, our vision has to be bigger than our house. Our vision has to be bigger than our church building. Our vision has to be bigger than what we see on our conferences. Our vision has to be bigger. And that is why maybe you're coming today for the first time or first few times. Like what is that thousands locally and millions globally? Why are we praying for this every single time? It's our dad's land. It's our father's borderline it's our father's fields it's our father's harvest see we are comfortable in the house we love the house I like the lights I like the coffee I like the design I like the stuff in this house but I have to understand this is just the place of operation for the field that my father has to stretch every single place my eyes can see the harvest is more urgent than the house if you have we are waiting for our bed set still. It's been about a month. It's probably going to come next month. If it doesn't come for a year, it doesn't get rotten when it comes late. But a harvest has a time clock. If they delay your Amazon package and it's a phone case, how many of you know it doesn't go bad because it came two days later. But if the harvest comes later, it goes bad please understand all the furniture in this house doesn't go bad with time but people out there my friend if they're not reached in time there it's not that God's grace is not working it's that for some of them will be too late there is an urgency that lies on the harvest but there is no urgency for the house you can decorate it you can repaint it you can mow the lawn you can do other things and it, it can take time but there my friend time is of the essence in fact in Joel it says be ashamed you farmers wail you wine dressers for the wheat and barley because the harvest of the field has perished harvest can perish harvest when it's not reaped it can perish and the Bible says the responsibility falls on the farmers, on the sons, on the laborers, on people who are keep opening the refrigerator and saying, man when am I gonna get that fresh word? When is the new prophet coming? Man how many do readers do you need to get before you realize God didn't save you to make you spiritually obese. God saved you and he says let's go save others. Let's partner with the Holy Spirit. Let's collaborate with the Lord of the harvest. You've eaten enough. You've had enough. That is good. If we could use what you have, we can save China already with it. It's time to get out to the harvest. It's time to begin to pray for the harvest. It's time to begin to reap the harvest. It's time to begin to fast for the harvest. It's why we need a new building. It's why we pray. It's why we fast. It's why we do what we do. It's so the harvest is urgent. Can somebody say amen? I want to let you know that the house is cleaner when people in it go to the harvest. 
the more drama in the church the less church is involved with the vision of God the moment you notice gossip and drama in the church that tells you you stayed in the house long enough during this quarantine we've noticed one thing too much in the house no good work from home as cute as that sounds I know the boss can save money on the facilities but man like if I'm gonna see you one more time today ain't not gonna be good for those of you who have children stay in your house all the time you know one thing about your house it's messy when God's children stay in this house for too long it will be messy and then this is what begins to happen with us we're like we all need to focus on unity no we need to focus on the vision we need to get out of the house people sometimes come to me and say pastor Vlad before we can have revival we need to remove gossip from the church no 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 gossip is a sign we stay too long we lost our vision and we made our vision keep cleaning the same house cleaning the house is not our priority it's weeping the harvest is our priority please understand the more we reach the harvest the more God will clean this house you will notice less drama you will notice less disunity you will notice less backbiting when we all focus on the mission instead of the unity come on somebody I know this is 9 a.m. service but I'm ready to preach somebody say amen I remember one of our team members came one time and said you know within our team there's just this unity you know and the challenge temptation and this is the traditional thinking we need to focus on unity and I said do not focus on unity nowhere in the Bible do we see that unity comes as a result of focusing on unity we focus on Christ and we focus on his mission and unity comes together the more we focus on the harvest the cleaner this house will be the more we focus on this house the more messy this house will be the more we make this house to vision my friends I'm gonna tell you one thing this house will be a total mess trauma Christian politics backbiting gossiping this person says this about that why because the moment children stay too long there's gonna be a mess on the floor but if we get the kids outside if we get all of us and we mind our own business and we recognize the church is not a destination it's a gas station you don't go to the gas station you go through the gas station so that you can reach your real destination our destination is to reach our city our destination is to reach our world our destination is to make an impact and make it impossible for people to go to hell and if we live with that view and if we live with that outlook we will see a cleaner house we will see more unity in this house give God some praise right now number three the harvest is the reward of Jesus's suffering the harvest is the reward of Jesus's suffering to reap a harvest is to suffer or benefit as a result of past actions to experience the consequences of some previous action or past event to reap a crop such as corn means to cut and to gather when somebody says you're gonna reap a harvest we know what this means you are going to suffer or benefit as a result of your decisions when Jesus reaps the harvest please understand this is really the only way he can get the benefit from his suffering you know what that means when we're not involved with the harvest we are delaying his reward in fact we have the power to forfeit his reward by totally being distant from the harvest Isaiah 53 verse 11 it says he shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied you know what Jesus's inheritance and reward is Psalm 2 8 it says the following ask of me and I will give you cars for your inheritance uh, I'm sorry houses no that's not what it says ask of me and I will give you 401k no that's not what it says where is that verse ask of me and I will give you a wife no that's not what it ask of me and I will give you nations you know what Jesus is inheritance you know what harvest looks like for Jesus not few chosen frozen backbiting gossiping Christians nations 
ask of me I will give you nations as your inheritance Revelation 5 9 it says and they song a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe tongue nation and the people Count Nicholas he was the father of the craziest prayer movement and the mission movement in 1700s he went to one museum where he saw a picture of Christ and blood coming out of his his face and the thorns covering his skull and on the bottom of that painting it says I have done this for you what have you done for me he said that painting gripped his heart with a heavy conviction he went back to his church and they started a prayer meeting that prayer meeting grew to a 24 hour prayer meeting they enrolled about 300 people this prayer meeting continued for 100 years not broken it's considered the longest prayer meeting in the history of the world during this prayer meeting 65 years into this non-stop prayer meeting 300 missionaries were released to start going to different worlds. In fact, no other missionary movement has accomplished more than these prayer warriors. In one of these missionary trips, there were two people that were sent out to West Indies. Prior to their missionary trip, over 20 people who went to West Indies died within the first year of their mission trip. And these two people were looking for a way to get to go to West Indies, but there was no way. They couldn't get the papers, nothing could work out in fact they volunteered to sell themselves as slaves on the market to go to West Indies the only problem is they were white and nobody wanted to buy them so they went picked up few trades and went there as businessmen and on the way on the ship one of them shouted these words may the lamb who was slain receive the reward of his suffering and off they went and nobody has heard about them since there's no good story at the end how it ended because we don't know nobody's seen them before and this phrase became the fuel became the fuel of this mighty prayer movement may the lamb who was slain receive the reward of his suffering they when they did a study on this prayer movement they found three simple keys any mission work that doesn't birth in prayer will not last number two missionary missions are not trips it's a lifestyle these were the first people in 1700 that stopped equipping people to go on mission trips they equipped them to learn a trade and go to that country island or that place as a teacher nurse a doctor an officer and live out their Christian life as a missionary versus going on a mission trip and come back and show us the photos. Missionary is a lifestyle. It's not a trip and it's not a location. And last thing that they teach is this, is the purpose of a message of every missionary is not social revolution. It's not social justice. It's Jesus Christ. May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his suffering you might not care about big church do you care about Jesus's reward that's the question I may feel comfortable with my salary I may feel comfortable with my level of influence I may feel comfortable where I am spiritually today and saying you know what honestly from the comfort standpoint of you I don't want a bigger church it's more headache I don't want that but reaching more people has very little to do with my comfort it has to do with his reward and I don't want to be a guy whose comfort jeopardized Jesus's reward I want to extend my vision I want to expand my view I want to lift my eyes from a little toes of mine that I'm looking at and I look at where Jesus has a reward of his suffering see the borderline on my father's fields look up to the fields he says the harvest is massive your backyard is small but my harvest is massive Jesus says
He says collaborate with the Lord of the harvest. Partner with the Spirit of God because he is busy with the tractors. He is busy reaping the harvest. He wants to hang out with you but he wants you in his harvest. And remember this is not a harvest. It's not pastor's reward. It's not your bishop's reward. It's not the assemblies of God that gets the reward. It is the lamb that was slain will receive the reward of his suffering. He will look at his labor with satisfaction. May I ask you a question? How is he satisfied today if majority of the people don't know him? He is not satisfied. In fact, he is grieved while children in the house are bickering over the milk and the harvest is not being reaped. I'm not going to ask you today to go and just sign up for a mission trip. I'm asking you first and foremost to lift your eyes from beyond this house into his harvest. I'm going to ask you to lift your voice and pray for the harvest. And thirdly, I'm going to ask you to ask the Holy Spirit to push you into the harvest. Meaning when he presents an opportunity, you jump. When he gives an opportunity to talk to your neighbor about Christ, you take it. When you're going through drive through and the person already knows your name, your order and your political affiliation, you tell them about Jesus Christ. That means you become a person that lives in the harvest and is reaching other people for Christ. As I finish this message today, there are people in this room. You are that harvest. He died for you. He suffered excruciating pain so he can reap you. It is his pleasure to pluck you from the life of hurt, life of darkness and life of sin. It brings him joy not to see you suffer but to see you be redeemed and benefit from his suffering. Not only he is ready to reap you but I know second thing about you. You are ripe. Your sin has made you ripe. Your guilty conscience has made you ripe growing up in church but maybe not seeing things that you wanted to see has made you right. Maybe some things has happened in your life whether it's divorce or perhaps you got married. Maybe it's the problems in college. It has made you right. It made you in need of a savior and you realize you got a degree but a degree is not a savior. You got a house but the house is not a savior. You got children but it's not a savior. There is only one savior his name is not Buddha. His name is not do more works. His name is not church attendance. His name is Jesus. Oh but I grew up in church. His name is not church. His name is Jesus. Jesus is ready to reap you. You are ripe to be reaped. God is ready. Today he wants to reap you for his harvest. Today he wants to reap you for himself. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want to tell you something. You are the harvest Jesus bled for. You are the harvest Jesus came for. And you are the harvest everything in this building is here for. He wants to reap you. You are ripe. Holy Spirit is ready. When the call will be given, respond. Amen.